You heard it everywhere and you probably want to learn more about it. Or else you wouldn't have clicked on this video. Or maybe you're just curious. Or maybe you're a cat. Well, we should probably take a deep breath before diving into the world of NFTs, where it seems like each term is harder to grasp than the other. Nevertheless, NFT basically means non-fungible token. In economics, fungible means an item is interchangeable, like cash, where one $10 note is worth the same as another $10 note and can be exchanged for it without losing any value. However, these tokens are non-replaceable digital assets that are unique to themselves, making them scarce, exclusive and valuable. They can take the form of digital art, music, collectibles, virtual worlds or entirely new unexplored compositions, creating a new medium for artists and creators to showcase their collections. I know, I still don't get it either, but you may be wondering how we got here. On May 3rd, 2014, Kevin McCoy created the first NFT in history, minting his non-fungible token, Quantum, way before the crypto art market exploded. In simpler terms, minting equals to the process of turning a digital file into a crypto collectible asset on the Ethereum blockchain or other blockchains. And anyone can basically achieve this with a fee called gas fee that typically costs between $50 to $200. The digital file is then stored in this decentralized database forever, and it's basically impossible to edit, modify or delete it. Get it? No? Well, you're not alone. Most NFTs are a part of the Ethereum blockchain. Ethereum is the community-run technology powering the cryptocurrency Ether and thousands of other decentralized applications also known as dApps. It's like Bitcoin or Dogecoin, but its blockchain supports NFTs. Simple enough. Now, you may be wondering the level of exclusivity of NFTs to a specific individual and how we can basically right-click on an NFT to save or screenshot it and you have every right to wonder about it. Here's the deal. You can copy or download a digital file as many times as you want, but NFTs give you something that can't be copied, legal ownership of the work. For instance, anyone can buy a Da Vinci print, but only one person can own the original. NFTs are growing increasingly popular as investors and collectors look to get involved in the latest blockchain craze and some of the prices being paid for these pieces is insane. The most expensive NFT was sold at an online auction at Christie's for $69 million. The NFT was a collage of 5,000 pieces of his work from 2007 to the present, creating one piece of art every day that resulted in a single JPEG file called Everydays, the first 5,000 days. We can definitely say it was worth the effort. Another collection of the NFTs is the CryptoPunks collection. CryptoPunks were first created in 2017 by Matt Hall and John Watkinson, a two-person team consisting of Canadian software developers. Today, it's the most expensive NFT collection available on the market. There are currently 10,000 unique CryptoPunks, each algorithmically generated through computer code, meaning no two characters are exactly alike, creating hierarchies due to rarity and exclusivity. These NFTs were originally released for free and could be claimed by anyone with an Ethereum wallet. You have probably already seen a Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT. These tokens act as both avatars and tickets to an online social club. They were launched in 2021 for 0.08 Ether each and now has a floor price of 83 Ethereum, which is roughly $2,060,000. The Bored Ape Yacht Club collection counts as a project collection. These are like Pokemon cards, taking a template and producing thousands of variations, each ranked in terms of rarity. And there are 10,000 apes, each with different properties, such as wearing fur types, facial expressions, clothing, accessories, and more. In fact, NFTs aren't only reserved for art pieces. In 2021, a virtual house set within a planetary landscape sold for $5,000 or 288 Ether. The house, called Mars House, was designed by artist Krista Kim with the help of an architect and video game software. Kim mentioned that she ventured into NFTs while exploring meditative design during quarantine to use the influx of digital life as an opportunity to promote well-being. The buyer of the 3D digital file will be able to explore the house using VR or AR. Other notable sales of NFTs include Canadian musician Grimes, who sold a collection of her artworks called War Nymph Collection Wall 1 for $5.8 million, or the band Kings of Leon, releasing their album as limited edition golden tickets, or even the sale of the first ever tweet for $2.9 million by Jack Dorsey, CEO of Twitter and Square. 
The explosion of NFTs also drew some iconic brands such as Nike to collaborate with the digital sneaker and fashion collectible site RTFKT, eventually acquiring the team to invest in the brand. RTFKT has also collaborated with notable creators such as Takashi Murakami along with Jeff Staple and has already sold $3.1 million in virtual sneaker designs earlier this year. With the demand for NFTs fast expanding, these digital assets are also initiators of a new era of digital artwork called the Metaverse, which consists of digital 3D universes that incorporate numerous elements such as communications, finances, game worlds, personal profiles and many more. The coming of metaverses within the internet can be best explained by Facebook's launch of Meta, signaling the shift towards a metaverse era where NFT-based augmented experiences are expected to build the next generation of social networks. Ok, that's enough terms for now. Now, you might be thinking how all of this virtual shopping and exchange processes coincide in the real world, for instance, how they are stored or their levels of sustainability. Well, at that point we have to dig deeper into the side effects of NFTs around the world. Until recently, the NFT art world hadn't given energy use that much thought, because the community of artists and collectors was tiny, and digital art sales weren't driving the computers that ran Ethereum. Nonetheless, according to the website CryptoArt.wtf, which let people see the estimated greenhouse gas emissions with individual NFTs, the analysis of 18 million NFTs came to the conclusion that the average NFT has a carbon footprint equivalent to more than a month's worth of electricity for a person living in the European Union. That being the case, the Ethereum cryptocurrency announced they were going on an energy diet to compete with more efficient blockchains, planning to cut its absurd energy consumption by 99% with the planned release of Ethereum 2.0. Yet, this has been in the work for years, with no clear deadline. What do you think about NFTs? Can they really become an inseparable part of our lives and direct our horizon into unexplored virtual realms, or does it belong to a specifically chosen niche that struggles to include the real-life values that we all carry? I guess the future will answer those questions. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification to not miss any new uploads. See you at the next episode. Thank you.